we welcome you to our show and in today's show we have with us the newly elected uh, member of the parliament to the Rajya Sabha for Meghalaya, Dr. W. R. Kharuki and we will be talking to him regarding some of the issues which are of course of concern to the state of Meghalaya. Uh, welcome Dr. Kharuki to our show. What do you hope to raise, what kind of issues would you hope to raise in the upper house? Well, since I have been elected by the uh, elected representative of the people, which means the MLAs. Whatever resolution that was passed by the assembly, which had to be taken in Delhi, I will try to take it up in Delhi. So, plus, when any other issue which matter with the state, I'll try to take it up. Okay. Sir, uh, during the election, as we know it on June 19, you know, the Congress had claimed that uh, the NPP was unable to you know to raise the issue regarding the CAB then now CAA so they said like the, sa the same it's going to be repeated in the upper house if there are any issues inflicting the inflicting the state so do you think that will be a cause of concern you know for for the party you see actually as a party in the state we did pass a resolution demanding exemption of the CAA in the whole state. Mm. Not only that, we even passed a resolution on the ILP, mm. demanding for ILP in the state. What the Congress was doing, they have been in power. And I'll tell you, this demand of ILP is not new. Mm. When I was a student leader in 1980, I was only 24 years of age at that time. Mm. We made a demand for an ILP. And for years and years, the Congress were ruling over the state. What have they done? Did they raise this issue in the in the parliament? And well, this is my first time I not have even attended parliament. So let us see. Do you think like uh, there is a very high possibility for the state to get ILP? Well, that I cannot uh, guarantee because we will take it up and we will see. So talking about uh, you know the education, uh, considering yourself coming from a, you know an education background, you were a professor back then. Uh, how do you view the educational scenario in the state? Well, to me, this is still my belief. I will. I'm not negative, but you see the educational system we having in the state. Mm -hmm. It is what I say is it is very very old. Mm -hmm. This is a system which was introduced by the British in 1813, in which at that particular point of time, that the main aim of introducing this system was to have cheap club. So till date, we are still going on that same pattern of education, which I think we have to change now with the present situation, with the present world, with the present demand. Because what happened today, we have been more many qualified people, you know, like people, almost 40, 50,000 people without jobs because of the system of education. So I think with the present world, with the present day of thinking, we should think of changing the present system. Well, sir, now talking about, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, we see that um, the education sector has been hit really hard, especially for students in the rural areas because most of them don't have... Um, connections, you know, like uh, the internet connectivity is very, very uh, limited. So how do you think we should go about it to ensure that everybody gets equal, you know, uh, education during this time? Well, the thing is, actually, when you talk of COVID, first, I think I really thank God for, you know, for that, if you look at our state, it is the only state that really it is coming down day by day. When you talk about the, the rural areas, I think it's high time that we think of a way out of how that like the like the uh, technology and everything reach the rural areas and not only that i think it's high time that even rural people should think of not coming to the city and town and cramping the city and town because the city and town of our state will not able be able to you know to accommodate in whatever aspirants they're having. Mm. And with this COVID-19, I think we learn. We survive because of whatever resources we're having from our rural areas. Mm. Had it not been that little resources we have from our rural areas, I don't know what will happen. 
So now I think the focus, the attention should be, let us go rural. Sir, you mentioned about you know the uh, rural folks migrating to the urban areas, but don't you think uh, like uh, the reason why they migrate is because the education system, the job placement in the rural areas is very less and less or none at all. So don't you think we need to focus more on the rural areas? Yes, that's why I'm saying that what I feel is that from now we should draw our attention to the rural areas. Why not have a good college in the rural areas? Why not? go for a, you know, a better agriculture, advanced agriculture. So in high time, we should also be thinking clear. Why I'm saying this? Now, just for example, even like uh, food, like say rice and everything, we have to depend from outside. Why not Mekhalia? If you think of fish, we depend from Andhra. Why not Mekhalia? If our, I may say, if our ancestor could survive and live on, you may say, at those, in those days, we don't have Mekhalia. Mm. If you have, like in Kasi, if the Kasi can survive on their own, in isolation that time, of course, today is a different world. Why not we think of that policy that we think Mekhalia now? Mm. So that everything we're doing, we think Mekhalia. And I think this idea of new markets opening up, you know, in not only in Shillong, in the different part of the of the state is a very good idea in which our people should think of this new idea now. So since you raised the issue of you know thinking thinking Meghalaya, we know that the government has also formed an economic task force uh, in view of the COVID-19 and uh, we know that many people, the young people have come back to the state. So um, uh, what, what would you, what kind of uh, policies or what kind of uh, ways which you would suggest, you know, for the people coming, especially those from the rural areas, to stay in the rural areas and, and venture into other forms, fields like agriculture, which is very rich in the rural areas? That's why, you know, when you think of anything introducing into our state, either economic, politics or anything, you have to have something, the center, I have spoken to the, to the chief minister. I said, sir, this should be the center of whatever that task force on economy thing make clear. Those boys and girls, they have their own skill. We have to, in, we have to invite that spirit on them that you think make clear. Not only, not only that, you, you see, this thing of going for government jobs, and I think we have to do away with this. Go to the rural areas, change the rural economy, and you'll see what Mekhalia will be. Coming back to politics, um, like you mentioned the coalition, we know that you know there have been uh, some rumors doing its wrong, uh, saying that you know there have been uh, some a little bit of a um, clash in the coalition among the coalition partners regarding the, um, the, the the way the government function because they're seeking for a cabinet reshuffling. Uh, do you think? Uh, these are expected since it's a coalition government? Well, the thing is, our CM is very clear on this. Mm. Well, this will be decided by our own party. Our party will not interfere in that. Suppose if there is a, you know, if there is a, there is a discussion about like reshuffling, it's not a thing. Within their party, it is there. We have nothing to say. Mm. So being, uh, you know, the president, state president of the party as well, um, you know what do you what do you think like uh, the, the 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 rumors and the claims made by the Congress stating that you know the NPP had approached them to to form a, an alternative government because they uh, the NPP is uh, very annoyed with the demands unreasonable demands made by the smaller party. Do you think do you accept like do you agree that you know the party had approached the the Congress with this? You see, there is nothing like it. And that's why I've given in the paper, this is a pipe dream in which, or I may say daydreaming of the Congress. We are in the ruling, we are comfortable with our alliance. So why should we approach the Congress? Actually, it is the other way around. Maybe they, 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 they could not, uh, like I may say, they tried to push the door, the door is not open, so they start making what they call in thing halagula from you know from outside we have we don't approach them why should we approach we don't need them they need us so uh, sir 
uh, we know that the political dynamics in Meghalaya is is not the same as it is in Manipur right now. And there were, uh, you know, um, speculations that in Manipur, the NPP will likely join hands with the Congress to form the, like uh, Okram Ibobi Singh said, the SPF, the Secular Progressive Party, to overthrow the BGP. Do you think the NPP will align with the Congress in Manipur? Well, you see, our Chief Minister has gone to Manipur. We are trying to settle it up because we are part of NDA. We will try our level best that we remain part of the NDA. So, uh, so now coming back to your uh, to your journey from being a student leader to a uh, to, to you know to an MPP uh, president, then the Rajya Sabha MP. Like, how was the journey like, sir, through all these years? Well, I don't know. The thing is, I was my feeling is that maybe I I I am born into politics. Born into politics means I had politics in my blood right from very young days. I was in student politics. Of course, the goal is the same. Our main aim is always our people because we have to fight for our own people. That's why I was saying that we regional party, we have our own regional ideas. We have our, we have our uh, uh, own thinking. While the National Party, they have their own national agenda. And to me, right from my student days, I always believe that we are to be protected not by other people, but by ourselves. Nobody will protect us. We have to protect ourselves. And that's why I believe in regionalism. So why, why don't you join the state politics? Why after so many years? Well, you see, actually, I, I, this, in 1998, I did make a decision that I will take part in state politics. At the time, I was in UDP. So, there were three contenders. Uh, unluckily for me, I lost in the election to the primary unit by two units. But I have certain principle. For me, politics is not a question of me being an MLA. It is a question of me serving the people. And I do believe, as a believer, I do believe that you know, God has his own plan for any person. So, like you, you, you had mentioned that you are, go, you are going to raise only these issues which, you know, the people through their public representatives have, have aired their, their, their grievances. But what do you think is that one main issue which really needs to be highlighted in the, in the parliament? Well, you see, main issue is actually how to develop a state also. Mm -hmm. That is one of the main issues. But this is mainly it is for the government because what actually our people need today is we have to develop our state. The only thing is this will, for me, this will be my new road. And well, I do believe that whatever qualified or whatever, still we have to learn. Knowledge is so great. So for me, this is like I say, a new, a new venture for me or a new place where I am placed, no? So I have to learn. And I do believe throughout my life, I'm quite a good learner. And I still believe, maybe I might be old, but still I think I can still learn. So only then I will be able to, to do something. Thank you so much, Doctor, for talking to us, for sharing your experience and your journey from being a student leader to a politician and, uh, you know, the experiences that you've had all these years. And we really hope that, you know, uh, the, the, the viewers will also uh, get to learn so many things from you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So, well, viewers, we have heard from Dr. Kaluki himself and we, have also, we also know that, uh, you know, from what he has said, uh, regarding the issues which which he is hoping to take it to take it up in the upper house uh, so that's all we have for you in today's show goodbye and thank you